Get in on the ground floor with launch jacking on today's episode. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now. Then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. Over the course of this podcast, we've talked about quite a few money-making techniques that are all absolute beginner techniques. This technique is level two, the next level of the building. It's a little bit more advanced, and it's not something I do very often, but it's something very powerful that it's worth understanding because when it's the right time and you jump in on this technique, you can make a lot of money. About a year and a half ago, some people I'm affiliate for had a very big launch, and using this launch jacking technique combined with other techniques, I was able to make $10,000 very quickly promoting their offer. It was a very nice payday that month, and I was only promoting that offer to a much smaller list than I normally do. So out of a list of less than 1,000 people that were interested in this market, that's a pretty good month. And the way I was able to do it was combining several different techniques. So about half of the sales came from my list and half came from the idea of launch jacking. On, on this particular contest, I also came in in seventh place or so. I can't remember my exact position because it was a while ago. So I won an additional prize because I sold so many units. The people in first place and second place, they sold like $100,000 worth each. They had massive lists and massive reach but I was still able using some very simple techniques to boost my list size enough that I could compete with much larger lists. So on a very simple level, the basic idea of launch jacking is you find out about a launch or a product that's coming out before anyone else and you establish a presence online so that your page, your sales page, your promotion, your whatever you put together can be found by people who type in the name of that product and then the word review name of that product and then the word bonus. Some people even target negative words and try to put in the name of that product and the word scam. If you type in the name of any internet marker, the word scam always appears on the list. And when you go in and read those articles, it always ends with an affiliate link. Those are the types of affiliates no one wants because that's not the right way to do business. It's unfortunate, but people will target a negative keyword, which hurts your reputation as a marketer, but makes some more sales. So in this case, I bought a website that was the name of the product, bonusandreview.com, something like that. So some people launch shack by buying a domain. This is domain level launch shacking and you buy name of the product review.com or name of the product bonus.com. People don't do this very often. This isn't worth doing unless you're promoting a product that's worth costs thousands of dollars. If you're targeting like a $2,000 product and the commission's 50%, you make a thousand dollars a sale. It's worth investing in buying a domain, buying hosting, setting all of that up because that costs a little bit of money. Some people just do YouTube launch jacking, which is very popular right now. Anytime you see a product, I even see this for $7 products and for $5 products and for $17 products. They make tons of YouTube videos reviewing the product, describing the product that they've never really seen or they saw a review copy earlier that day. They haven't really used or had really enough time to implement it. A key part of launch checking is that you have, the, you have your page, your video, whatever ready before the product comes out. This often leads to, with launch checking, a thing called bonus wars, which is where everyone is offering different bonuses worth more and more and more money. I've seen a product for $7 and the bonuses were, someone was offering were supposedly worth $21,000. And it's like nobody would actually give away a car with a pack of gum, right? Buy a six pack of beer, get a free car. That's insane, of course it's not real. But a couple of years ago, the bonus wars were just getting insane between a small group of people. There were 100 people competing with each other and people were just putting out the craziest, most intense bonuses. And the bonus you put together for launch does play a large role in doing very well with a launch jack. And you end up with people who, when they're about to buy a course, They type in the name of the course and then the word bonus into Google and they go through the different results. They look for the result that has the best benefit for them. And I've seen during this period where people give away $100 cash, where people give away an iPad, a video camera. If your affiliate commission is $1,000 per sale, you can afford to give away $400 to every single person who buys something from you and you still do really, really well. 
So you put together different types of bonuses. Some bonuses are purely content. So the best way to create your bonus is to go through the entire course and see where you can add a lot of value. And sometimes if it's a video marketing course, it makes sense to offer different software or video camera or microphones or different types of training to fit the course. And the more targeted your bonuses are, the more sales you'll make, the more you'll connect with it. When I did my big launch promotion, my bonus was crazy. I went through and there were 10 main lessons in the course or 10 main modules and I made a bonus to feed each one of those. When you really design your bonus tightly, you can be very competitive in the bonus wars. But if you're giving away money and gifts and stuff that costs money, someone gives away a $200 iPad, someone else is giving away a $250 iPad, you end up fighting to give away all of your commission money. And this is something that happened a lot and maybe it still does. I'm not really in the launch checking field very much and I'm not in the launch cycle mode very much, but you can get in these situations where you don't make any money and it's a whole complicated situation. There are also people who just want to read every review of a product before they buy it. I, right now, actually last night I was doing this, I was looking at several different pieces of software. There's four competing companies that make the software I'm thinking about using and I haven't used this particular type of software in about two years. In fact, I asked one of my friends, and I don't know why I forgot this, but his company, which makes a bunch of different software products, actually makes one piece of software in the sector I was looking at. And then I was like, oh man. And he sent me a free copy of it, which was so nice. And then when I went to log in, I realized he already had another free copy from when I asked him two years ago. So I now have two copies of this one piece of software. And I don't know if his software is the best solution. I'm going to test it with a couple things I want to do. I set up a brand new website last night actually just to test the software and see how it works. But I was reading tons and tons of reviews. It's very difficult to get real information because so many reviews are just affiliate ads. They're just leading towards that sale and they don't really have enough honest information. They don't you know, show the positives and the negatives of the software, which is <laughs> it's super, super, super annoying. And I even tried to ask one of my friends what he thought about these different pieces of software and like he wouldn't give me real advice. And it's uh, sometimes you end up in a situation where you end up reading all these different reviews and I don't know who's going to get the affiliate commission from if I make a purchase because I visit all these different websites. It's normal. Launch checking is all about, on a very simple level, finding out about launches way in advance. Earlier you know about a product coming out, the easier it is for you to jump in and steal sales from them. My friend has a product that's been in development for several months that will become a very large product long term. I could have easily set up a website and you know, put up a couple of re review videos and a couple of this and that to just capture sales evergreen over time. I didn't do it because I didn't really want to do that to my friend and I don't want to jump in on that. You know, it's not always the best move to do a full launch check. You don't want to do it to someone you're close friends with because a lot of time with launch checking, you're not generating new sales. It's only people who are already interested in the product that you're capturing the sale from. If you do a bonus thing or try and capture the name of the product, you try and rank for just the name of the product on SEO, well then you're only going to go for people that type in the name of the product. You're not bringing in new sales. So I didn't fully do that. We can do if you have like a strong website, like if I wanted to review a product that hadn't come out yet and I use Servno Master, because Servno Master ranks really, really well for other keywords, it would be very simple for me to jump in on a review of a product that hasn't come out yet. But I don't like to review things I don't use. So there are certain websites where people announce their launches far in advance because people with serious mailing lists, they plan who they're gonna promote two, three months in advance. And some of those websites, there's munchai.com, there's warriorjv.com, there's a bunch of websites like it. Those are the two that I've visited the most in the past. I'll post some more links in the notes for this show to other websites which list launches further and further out. And you can look at them and find one that seems like a good fit and you can set up a website or set up a YouTube video, anything to kind of do that. And you want to target, the keywords you target are product name bonus, product name review, and product name, or just pure product name. So if you can rank for those different terms, you can start to capture the sale. And the more informative your product review is, the more informative your page or video is, the more successful you'll be. And some people set up a launch deck video. And the reason it's called that is when a, book, when a product goes through launch, a ton of traffic happens in a short period of time. I tend to prefer to target Evergreen. Like my friend has a product in the parenting space. We have another product coming out together after that. So targeting that would be evergreen. I could see profits very long term from that because people will be buying it for years and years. The more 
you plan and strategize what you're going to do, the better. Now, the problem with launch jacking, and the reason it's not my business model, it's not a business model I teach, is because it's so much outside your control. If you take the time to make a whole launch jacking strategy, a whole strategy around a product, and then the product tanks or it's not a big launch, you've wasted all this effort and there's nothing you can do. You don't have any control because you're not using your own traffic. And in fact, I have spoken to some people who I was going to work with on a project and then they decide, no, I want to be a full-time launch jacker. I was like, well, first of all, that's kind of four or five years ago that people were really doing and making real money. Nowadays, I see people who do it and they try to make $100 off of a launch. It's so much effort when you can make that much money off a single day or two of sales of your books. It's not necessary to go in that direction. I do have pages on my website that rank for review or for bonus for a product. And this is the thing I want you to learn. This is very valuable. So I right now have a very strong page where I review Grammarly. If you look at it, my Grammarly review, it's something called like an honest Grammarly review or by a best-selling author. I think that's the name, but I can't remember the exact link because words get shortened in the URL, but it's something along the lines like servemaster.com backslash Grammarly review honest author or honest bestseller, something like that. And that page right now is ranked number 16 in Google. So anyone goes to the second page, which isn't very many, one of the reviews they'll see is mine. If I push that to page one and my review becomes the most popular review, I can start making a lot of affiliate sales because I am an affiliate for Grammarly, as you know. I'm also a big fan of Grammarly, as you know. I think I use it seven days a week. I can't remember if there's been a single day where I haven't used Grammarly since the day I bought it. It's such a serious part of my arsenal that I want to recommend it forever. And it's very valuable to me to recommend it that way. One of the things that I'm thinking about is how can I give more value to people who read my review and make the decision to buy Grammarly? Can I make some type of training course or additional resource that would be valuable to people? So then I could say, here's a Grammarly bonus. And I could target that term. I don't know if people type that in that much. I know people type in, oh, the other term is coupon. People type in product name plus coupon all the time. These are things to think about. So if I could find a really great coupon that would help people save money, then I'll go that route. And I have sometimes seen people, I think when I bought Grammarly even, I went through someone else's affiliate link because they had a coupon that saved me like $10. So then you end up in a coupon competition that has to do with the platform you're through. I think Grammarly's on share or sale. It's either on share or sale or commission junction. I think it's share or sale. And you can go in and they have different promotions all the time. And so if I grab, a, if there's a good coupon to add to my website, then I can go in the coupon war. The problem with coupon wars is you, every month you have to find the new coupon code for each thing you're pushing. It's a lot of work. And you're just competing for scraps. Much better to go for the people that are reading reviews and then creating bonuses. And I'm doing the same thing for ConvertKit. ConvertKit, I'm obviously not launch jacking because it launched two or three years ago. It's a great product that I use for all of my emails. I was editing and working on an email sequence last night, I have to say it was like a dream come true. It was so wonderful. So much easier than other platforms I used before just because the organization, it might not be the perfect email provider for everyone, but it's definitely the perfect one for me. It really fits the way I think. It makes processes very simple. It's very easy to add and remove people based on things they've done in the past. And once you set up the automation within a sequence, you never have to think about it. You always know it's gonna to go to the right people at the right time. Very exciting, very exciting pattern. And as I add in more sequences, I'm going to do more and more complicated things. So it's a product I'm excited about, a product I talk to my friends about. Before I write a review on my website, if I'm reviewing it to people I talk to on Skype and people I work with all the time saying, guys, you've got to see this, that's when I know I've got something I'm excited about. So for that, I am working on creating a guide on how to use ConvertKit to do different things I teach about. So I want to rank for ConvertKit bonus because I want to create something really valuable for people. And that will generate a lot of sales for me. So it is okay to do to use these principles. And there's nothing wrong with launch jacking either. It's not illegal, it's not even immoral. It's simply that some people don't like it when you do it for their products. I don't even mind if you do it for mine. People launch jack on me all the time. As long as you don't target my name plus scam, which is negative marketing, as long as you don't try and go after negative keywords, I'm fine. So to plan out one of your promotions, we're gonna go through the phases of that. The first phase is finding out about a launch that's going to be big well in advance. Don't get sucked into the nightmare world of going after seven and ten dollar products i would never be interested in launching uh in getting involved in a launch unless the product is closer to a hundred dollars and has a really nice upsell funnel that's the first thing if it doesn't have that if it's not higher ticket and really where i want to be is a product that's one to two thousand dollars the other place i want to be is something evergreen so that i can generate a lot of sales over time 
so that I can organically rank my website rather than playing a lot of short-term SEO games. This is very powerful for me. So I see a launch that's coming up and usually the best, the absolute best way is to hear about it through your social circle. So the more you network and the more people you know, and this can simply be your Skype network and someone goes, oh, there's a launch coming up. So-and-so's got a really cool launch coming up in six weeks or in two or three months. Ideally, you hear about it three months in advance, but usually the best you're going to get is four or five weeks in advance, and that's plenty of time, but I love to be ahead of everyone else. So the earlier you hear about a launch, the more amazing things you can do, the more you can prepare yourself and build a bonus and do other things. Sometimes as part of it, you'll actually interview the person, record an interview, put on YouTube, put on your podcast, put on your website. There's lots of great things you can do with the right type of promotion, especially when your promotion is all about helping that person make more sales and convincing people who are thinking about buying to actually make the buying decision. Sometimes a good bonus does convince a person who's like, should I buy this? Oh, it comes with this amazing bonus. I'm definitely going to buy it. Very, very cool. So you want to keep your pulse on your social network. Not everyone has one. You don't know anyone yet. That's fine. That's why there's all these websites that list launches way in advance. People announce their launch. Hey, I got something coming up in this amount of time. And you can find out about the launch well in advance. Most of these websites at least announce the launch a month in advance. Some people do post their launch two or three months in advance to these websites. So if you really check everything, you can find, oh, I like this vendor. I like this price point. This product looks good. You want to at least find out what the product's going to be about. So initially, you can create your website, create your page, or create your YouTube videos that are about the idea of the product. So you start to drive traffic, but the con or you start to rank your for the keywords, but your content isn't valuable yet. So you write a generic review of a video marketing product. Once you get your hands on your JV or affiliate version of the product, you can really see what it's about. You can rewrite and improve that page. So you can rank it before you know what the product is, but before it goes live, you really, you really, really want to see what it's all about and see what's actually included. Not everyone is able to do that. Sometimes with a big launch, if you're a small person, you're never going to actually see the product. So you're recommending something you've never seen. Kind of a risky place to be in, and that's why people don't do it with their main name or through their main website, is because you have to risk your reputation on a product that you hope is good, but you have no idea if it's any good until after you've promoted it. That's one of the other reasons I'm not a huge fan of launches. I've never been ahead of the game enough to go through an entire product before the launch, far enough beforehand to see the whole product, see what it's all about, make custom reviews, make custom bonuses, have everything ready to launch before the launch. I, <laughs> I'm not that on top of it. I wish I was, but I do so many other things, including recording podcast episodes five days a week, working on all my own products, working on so many other things that adding another challenge to the mix would be too hard. But that's why you want to only pick a few really great things to get involved in. So you find this launch, you know, this is the one for me. I want to be a part of this launch and you start prepping stuff and if you're doing pure YouTube, you just want to put together a channel, kind of the infrastructure together so that when it's pre-launch, when it's that phase where the product's about to come out, you can quickly have your video up first or have your website ranking first. So if you're putting together a bonus, once you know what the product's kind of about, you can create your bonus. What some people do, and this is a classic mistake, is they just buy a bunch of PLR which is just generic content you can resell. I'm always trying to, lately, find half-decent PLR and repurpose it, which is where I find like a checklist for a piece of PLR or I go grab a PLR course on a topic that I'm teaching about in one of my blueprints. But 99% of the time, I can't use a single sentence from it. I look at it for ideas. I'm like, oh, I wonder if they have an idea in here I didn't think of for this little thing and I can take what they wrote and just rewrite the whole thing from scratch, but I can use their bullet points but almost never even have content at that level. So when you're sending out a bunch of stuff that someone sold to you for $7 and you're trying to resell it like it's worth hundreds of dollars, it's not because everyone has it. And then you're giving away stuff that's just really poorly written. You don't want to do that. And high quality, like the actual good PLR is going to cost you 50 or 100 bucks for anything half decent. You don't want to do that either. You don't want to get kind of stuck spending a bunch of money beforehand either. The best thing to do is create your own trainings that would be really, really valuable to accompany this launch. For example, I probably mentioned the name of one of my new Kindle products that's coming out that I've been working on. I want to launch a smaller version of my Kindle training on ClickBank to go on to another marketplace. You could easily buy them at productreview.com. And I don't want to say in this episode because it's like making it too easy, but I do mention the name of this up and coming product in other podcast episodes and it's certainly mentioned on my website. So you could buy that product name review.com put together a really good review and bonus package and you will probably make a bit of money over the next few years. 
while that product, which is an evergreen product, gets traffic, gets sales, people will go and read your review. If your review is a real review and you've actually been through the product, you'll make a lot more money. You'll have a much more successful promo and that's fine. That's very valuable to me. An honest review, running someone through an honest review before they see my, the actual sales funnel, that's fine because they go in knowing, oh, this person said it's great. Maybe I really will buy it. You're converting maybes into buyers. I'm fine with that. I love the bonus thing. I love great reviews. That's all valuable. The more value you're really adding, the better. So you create your bonus to really fit. So perhaps you made a piece of software where someone on a website can look at what that website would look like if they were using their Kindle browser. Those probably exist. I'm not sure. I think I've seen one in the past. I personally don't trust those. I always check what something looks like on my actual Kindle. And in fact, last night I was taking a screenshot of my Kindle, which means I set my Kindle on my desk and then I took a picture of it with my camera phone because that's the only way to take a picture of a Kindle, what's on the screen. That could be something very cool or you could have an entire bonus where you walk through using my method and having launching a book successfully. So there are really cool things you could do that would make sense to the person who's buying the product. If it's a course in another space, let's say it's a course on losing weight using yoga. Maybe what you have as your bonus is a whole bunch of strengthening exercises or stretching exercises like a pre-yoga workout or an after yoga shake to drink that will help you recover quickly when you're on a weight loss regime. Things like that. You obviously would have to know more about yoga in that space than me. Maybe you give away a physical thing. Everyone who buys through my fit link, I'll send you a yoga mat. That could be what you do as well. There's a lot of ways you can do this and a lot of cool things you can do when you know your market really well. If you were targeting another product, another one of my friends makes is a potty training course. If your bonus was anyone who buys through my link, I'm going to send you a pack of stickers. Potty training, a big part of it is using charts with stickers to say you did a good job today, you did a great job. Kids love stickers as a reward. It's one of the better rewarding systems to use. That's a great type of bonus you could create and add on to other people's products. You can also do things like digital coloring books where it's just downloadable. So you can create something that's unique and valuable and then you're going to do very well. So the process is really find the, find the product earlier the better before it comes out. Create your content and grab your digital real estate as early as possible. Create a valuable bonus, a valuable review. And then do everything you can to organically rank that. You want to be the top video that pops up for product name review. You want to be the top blog post that pops up for product name review. You want to be the top website for product name bonus. These are the ways to get into launch tracking. And again, I'm much more a fan of finding either a really high ticket launch. If you're going to do this, it's better to do it and make $1,000 per sale than $10 per sale. It's the same amount of effort to jump into either market. And what I really recommend finding is something that is evergreen that you want to promote for a long time and setting up a funnel. At that point, it's no longer called launch decking because it's evergreen and you're not trying to just steal launch traffic. You're actually thinking about long-term profits. And that's where you have something similar to my convert kit reviews, similar to my Grammarly reviews. When I review a piece of software, it's a real review that gives a lot of value. And in fact, the next thing I'm thinking about, which you know, if you're, if you're listening to this a little bit in the future, you may see is there's a piece of software called Affinity Photo, which is designed to compete with Photoshop. Photoshop, when I bought it, cost nearly $1,000 as part of the, create the bundle from Adobe. And now Adobe wants you to pay like 30 to $50 a month, sometimes more to use their different software. So it's a monthly fee forever. Affinity Photo is 50 bucks once and man, it's way better than Photoshop so far. I haven't fully switched over because I haven't been through all the tutorials. So the little things I know how to do in Photoshop very quickly, I don't know how to do all of them in Affinity. But so far, every time I've said, I wonder if I can do this in Affinity, it's been way more intuitive and way easier. And I'm very excited by that. I'm very excited by what I've seen so far from this product. So the next thing I'll write a review of is something that I really like. I actually really like this product. I'm, I'm thinking about using it and the fact that it's better than something more expensive gets me very excited about it. I do already mention Affinity Photo is a great product at a couple places on my website, but I haven't done a full-blown review yet. But I do use it and I do like it. And that excitement, that's a sign it's something that I want to jump in on and try and rank for and put out the word on because it's something I really, really like. It's easier to review, to write, make a bonus for stuff you like. That's what really makes this process much, much easier. I really recommend understanding the principles of LaunchJack to use in other areas of your business and to use for evergreen promotions. But if you do need to make some quick cash and you know about a launch at least a couple of weeks in advance, you can make a lot of money very quickly 
by understanding and getting in on the ground floor with a little bit of launch jacking. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Serve No Master podcast. Email your questions to podcast at servenomaster.com and your question with my answer might appear in the next episode.